Welcome back to Cthulhu Death May Die. We're playing with Ahmed, we're playing with Borden, we're trying to take down Cthulhu in the end. We have two of the four uh, laboratories destroyed, and we need to destroy two more, and that will summon Cthulhu onto the board, and then we can try to take him out. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes. All right, Ahmed's sitting over here, and what do we want to do for his first action? Let's take a look at his character card, and then we'll decide what we're going to do with him. All right, taking a look at here at Ahmed, he's already hit his second insanity threshold, which now means anytime he rolls, he gets a green die bonus. He's sitting with two stress, fully healed. He's got a whiskey bottle to heal all of his stress and get rid of any guilty conscience cards. He also has medicine, so that's good, but he also is paranoid. So when he hits a threshold, all monsters move towards him, which is not good. He's upgraded a little bit here. He can heal a combination of two at the end of his turn. He can sneak one character, one enemy on the board per movement. Uh, and he has uh, Arcane Mastery pumped up a little bit, so every Elder Sign rolled on the die counts as a success. Oh dear. All right, three actions. Let's go back to the board and start him off. Okay, I think for his first action, really boring, I think he's just going to try to put the fire out in his space so that when he leaves there, he's not going to have a fire token attached to him. He gets three black dice and a green die to try to uh, extinguish the fire. Uh, and yes, let's see if he can do it. And he absolutely extinguishes the fire because these two count as successes. There's only one fire token. He is going to do a stress though to re-roll one of these insanity rolls because we don't want too many of those. And he re-rolls to a blank. Okay, that's not bad. So he gets rid of the fire token because he had, for every success, you get rid of one fire. He's had one, two, three successes. But he does take a little bit of a sanity hit for doing so. So let's pump his sanity up one. Already takes a sanity hit for putting out that fire. He's going a little bit crazy. Er, <laughs> all right, that was action one. Now let's see what he wants to do for action two. All right, for his second action, he will move. He can move three spaces. He can sneak one enemy. So he's going to go one in here, two to here. He's going to drag one fire token with him, and then three into this room. Uh, oh, and the cultist will come with him because he can only sneak one. All right, let's see what we're going to do in the room with another one of those laboratories. All right, for his final action, he will try and get rid of the cultist because he's in his way. <laughs> so we're going to be rolling uh, for an attack. He's going to get three black dice, one green die, and every elder sign counts as a success. We need two. He's got two health. And wow, we actually get two successes right on that die but we're going to spend our final stress to re-roll one of the insanity come on and we get a blank perfect so that's two hits uh you're out of here mr cultist and we do have to take one more sanity hit though that's not great all right another sanity hit and we're halfway up the track and cthulhu is nowhere to be seen all right, that was our three actions, and now it is draw a Mythos card, and we just know how wonderful they are. All right, we're drawing up a Mythos card, and it is... The Sleeper Awakens. Oh, great. If there are two or more relay spaces adjacent to each other at the end of the turn, advance Cthulhu on the track as if there were three of the symbols. But you know what? We only have one relay token on the board, and it's not adjacent to any other one, so this, he doesn't awaken. Cool! Oh, dodged that one. Uh, and now it is investigate or fight. Well, he is in a space with no enemies, so he gets to investigate, uh, but unfortunately his stress is maximum, so we're investigating some lab books. It's filled with a strange scroll. Something about... Swapping the minds of humans and animals looks like nonsense. You may cla claim the lab notes. Gain two green dice to all rolls if you have at least one student or animal companion. Well, we might as well take the lab books. Why wouldn't we? So we're going to add that to our character sheet. And then it's going to be resolving end of turn effects. All right, so we've added on the lab notes. We've got medicine, whiskey bottle, lab notes. And I wonder... No, nah, we're not going to use the whiskey bottle. So end of turn effects. We do have... Now we can heal a combination of health, stress, two. Uh, so we're going to heal two stress, of course. And now we have fire 
to deal with. And I think I should probably look at the back of the rule book and make sure we're doing those things in the proper order because there is an order for resolving end of turn effects. Uh, fire. Oh, we do the fire first. Um, hmm, I wonder if we do. I'm going to double check this. All right, I think it is, uh, you can do this right at the end of your turn, and the end of his turn is when everything is completed. So we have to do the fire first. So he's going to roll one black die to see if he can dodge the fire. And he has, oh yes, so nothing happens with the fire. Awesome, he doesn't get an insanity, he doesn't get a damage. There are no other end of turn effects happening at all. There's nothing for Cthulhu. It's nothing for cultists or nothing else he has. So now he can use it's the end of his turn, and now he will heal two stress. So it was important timing-wise because he couldn't use the stress to reroll the fire damage, because this says very clearly at the end of your turn. Okay, that was the end of his turn completely. Uh, we did all the end of turn effects now. Um, and yeah, again, timing-wise, I'm not 100% sure, but it says resolve end of turn, the end of your turn. I don't know. I'll, I'm going to rule it that way, that he does it at the very end of his turn. Alright, over we go now to Borden. Let's have a look at her and decide what she's going to do. Alright, we're looking at Borden. She's fully healed, fully stressed. Um, she's got a pistol when attacking, gets a green die. She's the Amulet of Nagal. She can transfer fire damage onto others. And she's almost into her next insanity level, which is... Probably not great because she's prone to having psychotic outbreaks. <laughs> okay, so looking at everything here, we pumped up her Savage. She can deal two damage to a single target if she's alone with an enemy when she goes into the space. She's got a free run action, so she can move for free once and then three other actions, and she can dodge by stealth one enemy. All right, let's go to the board and see what she's up to. And for her first action, she is busy beating on this lab equipment, so you might as well continue. So she's going to do an attack on the lab equipment. And for her, she's crossed the threshold on her sanity track. She gets a green die, three black dice. This is not an attack. She can't use her pistol ability. It's a straight up roll, but she does get the bonus for her sanity track. So we need two damage. Come on. And she gets, oh my lord, she gets two damage. Holy jumping. Two damage. Um, two damage. Ooh. Okay, and three. Oh, this is absolutely horrible. And she, oh, she can't reroll anyway. Her stress is at maximum. She should have he, uh, taken a rest action first. She didn't. <laughs> oh god, all right. Two damage, the lab is blown up. So we're gonna take a look at this. Oh, as my battery dies, damn it. All right, we're gonna come right back. All right, she blew up the laboratory. And let's see what happens when she does that. Inferno! Oh, great. Place a fire token in this space in each adjacent space. Ooh, that's horrible. That is not good. So a fire token here, this one's adjacent. And this one is adjacent. This one is not. There's no connection there. So still, that's an awful lot of fire. That was her first action, but now we have to process one, two, three insanity. So let's go ahead and do that. And that is not good. One, two. Now we stop there. All excess insanity is lost when we get to a threshold. Oh dear. So she gets to a threshold, which means she has a little bit of a psychotic outbreak. Move to the nearest space with at least one figure. Uh, if your space has other figures, do not move. Then deal two wounds to all figures in your space. Um, she is one, two, and she's going to move, so she's going to take a bunch of fire tokens on her. Oh dear. So she's got one, two to the cultist, or one up the stairs to the Bayaki. I wonder where she wants to go. Um, I th oh dear, I gotta think about this. All right, I think she gets to level up right now though, because she hit the threshold, which is gonna trigger this. Again, timing issues. So I think she gets to level up and then trigger her psychotic outbreak, and that will make a difference. So I think we can do it that way, I'm pretty sure. So, we're going to level her up, which means we're going to take her savage ability, we're going to level it up when it says, if you kill a target and there are no other enemies in their space, heal all your stress. 
we're going to put her there because she's at full stress. Well, let's go ahead and have her do her psychotic outbreak, which means she moves to the nearest uh, figure and deals two damage to it. So that's going to be the cultist up here. Let's get her moving. Keeping in mind, this is just her first action. Her first action was to blow up the laboratory, which she did, uh, which has caused all of this craziness to happen. So she's going to go one, two, and move right in here. That's the closest enemy. One of the two closest you get to choose. Unfortunately, she's going to grab three fire tokens on herself. One, two, three. And she has a free move action, too. So she basically has a free move and two other actions. This is actually pretty good. So she comes in here with her psychotic outbreak and she kills the cultist because she deals two damage now uh, to the cultist based on her ability, her savage ability. And she just killed an enemy, which means all of her stress gets healed. And that's why the timing there was important. So all of her stress gets healed because she killed an enemy. And now she has a free move. She can move up to four spaces and she still has two other regular actions left. She could probably even take out that next lab. Oh, but I think she wants to go upstairs and deal with maybe the back here, the fire vampire. Let's, oh my goodness. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, she is really, and I mean really, playing with fire um, in a big way. So, she is going to move out through here. So this is going to be her move one. She's going to grab three extra fire tokens on herself. She has six now. And for her second, so she's in her, in her free move action. She can move four spaces. One, her second is to move upstairs. And her second move is here coming upstairs. Um, and she's in the face and the space of a Bayaki. And I think she's going to end her free movement there. She could move into this space with the Star Vampire. Uh, do we want to do that? Do we want to keep moving to the Star Vampire? Uh, and then attack it. It's got four health. No, I don't think we want to. We want to end off there. Anyway, yes, that's what we're going to do. So we end our, our free movement here at the Bayaki. And now she has two actions left. So she's going to attack the Bayaki. There's fire in here. There's all kinds of stuff going on. The stairway. And I have to get the dice tray in here. So she has the pistol as well. So let's figure out how many dice she gets for attacking. I think it's a lot. All right, so for attacking, she gets a free green die for her craziness level. She gets one, one attacking, gain a green die for the pistol. So she's going to get two green dice and three black dice for this attack. And she can do two damage to the Bayaki right off the bat anyway because it is a a single enemy in a space. So she gets all of this plus two damage to the Bayaki. Let's get to it. And she also has full stress. So yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, this is absolutely perfect. So she doesn't take any more stress at all. She just does two damage to the Bayaki uh, on that attack. And because she's a savage, she can add two damage. So she just rips apart the Bayaki with her axe. <laughs> nice job. And that was, she still has one action remaining. And it says, uh, if you kill a target and there are other enemies in its space, uh, get all your stress back. Well, she doesn't need to. She doesn't have any stress. She's stress-free with her axe. Her final action is to be moving into the space with the Star Vampire. And why is she doing that, you say? Because she's going to grab another fire token on herself, which is an absolutely ridiculous amount of fire tokens. That's the end of her actions. And now, to draw a Mythos card, which is probably horrible. Ooh, lab accident. Each figure in a space with an undestroyed lab takes a wound. No, that's Ahmed. Yep. Uh... Also, each investigator with a guilty conscience takes two stress, which is nobody for each stress they cannot take. They take a wound instead. All right, unfortunately, and that's our third symbol too. Ugh, unfortunately, Ahmed is over in the lab. He's going to take one damage. So yeah, unfortunately, Ahmed here is in a, an undestroyed uh, lab. I think that's what it said. Figure in a space with an undestroyed lab takes a wound. So Ahmed here is going to take a damage 
from the lab. Which is not a super big deal. It's his first damage. Yeah, we'll live with it. Back we go to... Oh, gosh. <laughs> Back we go to Borden. Uh, she's finished all her actions. That was the draw. The Mythos card. We're on to investigate or fight. Well, she's going to have to fight with the Star Vampire and it will attack her. She has a ton of stress <laughs> are available for rerolls. The Star Vampire. I keep calling it a Star Vampire. It's a Fire Vampire. What am I talking about? We have a Star Spawn, but it's not on the board. It's four health. When it attacks, place a fire token in its space. One green and two black. So it's going to place a fire token in its space. And it gets, did I say, one green die, two black dice. And she has a lot of rerolls. And so, oh yeah, she's just going to say, you know what? No big deal. She's just going to go ahead and take the one damage. So let's go ahead and take her one damage. She is a walking, killing machine. She just takes one damage from the fire vampire. She has one, two, three, four, five. She has seven, <laughs> seven fire tokens on her. Good thing she has the amulet of Nagal. If you would take wounds from a fire, you may instead deal that many wounds to one enemy in your space. Oh, good God. And it says, if you, if you kill a target... And there are no other enemies in the space. Heal all your stress as well. So she got. She has a bunch of rerolls. So we want to make sure we get at least four damage on the fire vampire with seven dice. Let's get to it. She might get a lot of insanity though, which is not good. All right, seven, <laughs> seven black dice, and I only have six of them, and that's even with the extra dice pack that I have. So we're gonna roll a six first. Oh, I see way, way, way too much insanity. Oh my goodness. And not even one hit. Um, well, there's three hits, three insanity. I don't know if you know if we want to go there. I don't know if we want to go there. Oh man. Um, we're going to re-roll. Well, we're just going to be re-rolling a lot. We're going to re-roll one, two, three, four. She's going to burn all of her stress. One, two, three, all four stress to re-roll all four of these. It's crazy, I know, but she's gonna re-roll them all. I thought that we need hits. And she ends up getting just two hits total. Two hits to insanity. That was actually horrible for the fire. Uh, so he only takes two hits, but she's gotta take two uh, sanity hits for using the Nagal amulet. Oh, damn it, we, I thought for sure we could take out the fire vampire, but we couldn't. And she's going crazy a little too fast. One, two, she's now one away from another threshold. And we don't have Cthulhu on the board yet. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, it is what it is. That was end of turn dealing with all the fire tokens. Again, thematically works pretty good because it's a fire vampire. So fire is probably not going to damage it too much. All right, we're going to zoom out. I think we've covered up everything. Oh no, we haven't. We haven't because... Uh, Cthulhu is going to advance. Ugh. All right, let's have Cthulhu advance. Yep, we have three of these cards. One, two, three. So we have to take all cards and shuffle them all back together to create a new Mythos deck out of the 16 cards that we have. Ugh. And then we have to process all of the Cthulhu end of turn, or uh, not end of turn, all of the Cthulhu advance uh, options. Cthulhu will advance. Ooh, he's coming along. He's coming along the track. All right, so we have one Cthulhu answer. Put a rely token in your space. If there's already one there, put it nearest to Jason. And summon a, summon a cultist in each relay space. Move the star spawn. If the star spawn is not on the board, put it on the blue gate, which just happens to be exactly where uh, Borden is sitting. Oh, dear. Let's get that happening. Oh, and the other thing, too, is... Um, Put a fire token in any space with a cultist that does not have a fire token. So let's let's go ahead and, oh wow, do all of this stuff. And now we start seeing the limitations of the board spaces themselves. So this is going to get a relay token. Every space with a relay token gets a cultist, which will be here, and which will be up here. And the star vampire, or the, is that, no, the star spawn, which is this mini Cthulhu dude, appears at the blue gate, which is right here. So, 
um, yeah, <laughs> space is not big enough to hold everybody. And the Star Vamp uh, Vampire has two damage on it. And I do believe, I think we did things in order. I think that's going to be it. Just double check, make sure I did everything okay. And then we're going to wrap up our episode for today. All right, I think we covered everything off pretty good. We have Ahmed here. His sanity's doing well. Borden's getting a little bit uh, dicey here with her sanity. Not exactly the best. <laughs> Not exactly the best. So thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for the comments, subscriptions, and likes. This is Cthulhu Death May Die. We're playing Blasphemous Alchemy, which is Season 1, Episode 1. Uh, with Ahmed and with Borden, and we're trying to take Cthulhu down. We've got just one more laboratory to blow up, to summon him onto the board, and have a final showdown with him, which could end horribly for our characters. Or we could beat him. Who knows? Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time. Corrections at the end of the episode! I forgot to put a fire token in here with this cultist that had no fire, so boom, we're doing that. And, ah! Uh, when I was rolling for fire for Borden, I rolled six dice. I was supposed to roll seven. We used up all her re-rolls, so we're just going to go ahead and roll one of the black die to be the seventh die. And whatever this is, she's just going to have to suck it up. And it's a hit. So we're going to have to go over to her player area, add an extra hit onto her. Uh, oh no, sorry, the hit would go onto the fire vampire. Never mind. So the actually... Star, the fire vampire is going to be three damage. That's what I'm trying to say because she transfers all damage to the enemy. So that I just missed rolling one die for her. So that cleans that up. I think I got everything now sorted, and that will be the end of our episode. So now Borden's at full stress, one and one health damage. Achmed's at three stress and two health damage. When we come back the next time, we're going to continue on with Cthulhu Death May Die, Blasphemous Alchemy against Cthulhu.